Hello Velomobile fans, welcome to episode 2 of Book vs W9 Aero Testing. Our candidates today are the same as before. The Book and the W9 set up identically because the point is not to test stock versus stock. It's to test two bikes set up exactly the same to see which one is better aerodynamically or if there's even a difference. So the light towers stay, it's called a hot spot actually, the mirrors stay because that's how the bulk is set up and that's how I'm setting up the W9. Um, obviously if I take the mirrors and the hot spot off the W9 I'm going to do the same on the bulk and we're going to get the exact same results as I would uh, without them except maybe the wattage is a little bit different. The weather is 88 Fahrenheit consistent temperature through all six runs with an 8 to 10 mile an hour consistent wind coming out of the west. The course runs west to east and I did not run it in the opposite direction because I'm not trying to equal out the influence of the weather because it's the same for all six runs. and. I'm not trying to say that it takes this particular amount of wattage to go a particular speed because that's a silly thing to do. It all depends on what tires you have set up and the weight of the rider and that's going to vary from person to person. Now one final thing I want to say is the reason for this testing and I first need to explain that I don't care which bike is fastest as far as I'm concerned all of the velomobiles currently coming from the factory in Romania are going to be fast bikes. The reason that I'm running them is to show that actually the differences are probably so small that determining your purchase based on speed and nothing else is probably not the best approach. And I also think that we get hung up uh, in conversations and online forums discussing about which bike is the fastest when really it doesn't make that much of a difference. When I choose a Velomobile, I'm looking for, first of all, what bike is going to fit me the best. Right now that bike is the Bulk and I'm hoping with a different seat that the W9 will fit me well as well. Um, my purchase decision for the bulk was based off of the fact that I wanted something that was lighter and stiffer and more comfortable than my Quest XS and the bulk has been all of those things for me. I purchased the W9 because I wanted space for wider tires in the front and the rear so that I could have a bike to ride here in the winter. Uh, where we have quite a lot of snow and I also like the idea of the Durchdacht hood for winter riding. Right now I may have to make some modifications because the visibility for me seems a little bit limited but that's for another video. So when you're looking at a bike and making your decision my encouragement to you is rather than focusing on which one is the fastest uh, get a test ride and see which one fits the best, which one has the features that you need. Does it have the kind of space for tires you need? Does it have the kind of cargo space you need? Does it fit you ergonomically? Do you like the way it handles when you steer? Do you feel like it is uh, flexible enough for where you ride? Do you feel like you have good visibility and those are the properties that I think are most important and I will probably make a video about that at some point in time too for potential new riders to help guide you through the decision process of getting a new Velomobile. So let's take a look at the testing footage.
So, here's the results. But before I give them to you, once again, I want to reiterate that it is irrelevant to me which one of these bikes is fastest. They're all fast, in my opinion. They're all great bikes to ride. And when you choose a ride in a Velomobile, choose the Velomobile that fits you best and has the features that you most need rather than worrying about is one going to be a tiny bit faster than the other. Because frankly, when you're looking at two Velomobiles of roughly the same size, fitting the same size of rider, chances are they're going to be pretty close, if not dead equal, because that's just how aerodynamics works. And again, these bikes were set up identically because we are looking for not in a stock form which one is faster, but which one with the identical features has the best aerodynamics. This test was done at 30 miles an hour because some people felt that I tested at too low speed last time, so for the sake of curiosity, I tortured myself six times, putting out way more watts than I'm used to. My FTP is definitely below what I was riding in these six rides, and I definitely felt it when I went the next day for a ride. Uh, <clears throat> it was a very slow, leisurely recovery ride, as will today's ride. So, with all of that said, let's take a look at the results. Once again, absolutely dead even. Okay, so the W9 is 0.2 miles an hour slower, but honestly, my legs were pretty dead at that point in time, and uh, it was hard for me to get up all the way to 30 miles per hour in the sprint. Um, so I'm willing to say that that 0.2 miles an hour maybe maybe is statistically insignificant if it was 0.5 miles per hour i would be able i would be willing to say okay the w9 is a little bit slower but it's close enough that i would say to me it's within the margin of error and it just reinforces to me what i found in the last testing that these bikes really are very very similar is there things that could be done to optimize them yes i'm sure there is I see that the world record uh, was set last night by Ruben and Holger and that they were averaging around 150 watts which is lower than I was and they were going faster than I was. Now of course they're on a closed track and that's probably equaling out any influence of the weather and their bikes have been highly optimized and although my W9 was optimized by Daniel Fenn I think there's probably more that could be done to both of those, but is that something that I feel needs to happen? Do I need to put really fast tires on them? Nah, I'm just commuting. I'm going out riding for fun. I'm not worried about going super fast. But it is nice to know that these available wheels are capable of being race bikes and at the same time being good commuting bikes. And that's one of the things that I think is the coolest about a Velomobile is just how flexible it is. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know some of you, no matter what kind of testing I do, are going to have your doubts. And for you, I would encourage you, get a hold of both bikes, go out and do your own testing, and upload it. And I'm more than happy to see lots of tests done on these. But, at the end of the day, I think it probably doesn't matter. Just choose the bike that suits you best. Thanks for watching. Bye.